Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're watching, listening to this podcast. Welcome to Your Onion Podcast. Today we have a special guest called Fabienne Hajar. Hajar? Yeah, correct. <laughs> she is the senior manager, area, area manager. What other title were you throwing at me? Well, general manager. <laughs> it's all, all good. <laughs> of Surfcore here for Qatar and Iran. Yep. So, um, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Uh, Fabian, we've known each other for how many years? I, no, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Maybe nine, ten years? Nine, ten years now, yes. So you helped me out uh, when I was at a previous production company. Yes. Because I was in a building that um, didn't have the right legal documents to basically register our company. Oh, wow, you remember. I, re <laughs> I remember because I was sorting it out. So uh, it was very clear. But luckily the tower said, look, you don't have to pay rent until, you know, you've sorted out, we've sorted out the licenses for you. So I had to look elsewhere to register the company and yeah. you were there for me. Yeah, we, well, we were still with one location at that time, Commercial Bank Plaza. Commercial Bank Plaza. Well, we've expanded since then. I know. Well, we can go into all that. You can <laughs> sing Surf's Core praises because, you know, to me, you are Surf Core. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's a nice thing to say. Well, that's it. Anytime, you know, someone mentions about Surfcore, it's Fabian that comes to mind. Well, kind of this is true. Yeah. Now when I think about it, it's true. I um, I started the business and uh, I've expanded the business Well, there the you go. Here. You are Surfcore. Wow. So anyway, <laughs> so tell, just give us a brief insight on how you ended up here in Qatar. So what, what were you doing before? Well... I mean, it's a bit of a surprise because my background is completely different than the real estate and the service office business. I've, I've graduated um, with a pharmacy degree, PharmD. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. And I've worked for 12 years in the pharma market before moving to Qatar with my family. Okay. So, um, and then came to Qatar, joined my so husband. So why did you come to Qatar? Well, because my husband moved out of Lebanon and came to Qatar and um, so that's the same old story either of you know else. yes either they've come for a job or they followed a spouse, spouse yes. yeah. so um, brought the kids came here and um, looked for opportunities unfortunately not in the pharma market and I ended up with surf corp but is there a pharma market here is it Oh my God, that's a tricky question. I don't want to say something wrong. <laughs> well, no, I've never, I've never really come across. Actually, I've well, never had anyone. Well, the answer is, is uh, it's still, it needs improvement. You mean it needs what regulation, or you know, it needs proper improvement. <laughs> well, look, I know that when I go to the doctor, when I come out of the doctor's surgery, I'm handed a bag full of drugs. Yes. And some of them, you know. I don't know, should be given to me, shouldn't be given to me. You know, I'm always researching afterwards and going, what have they given me? Well, I think there is a lot of room for improvement yeah. in the pharma market here. But you didn't, you didn't want to go, you didn't want to look into... Um, you, I, you felt a change? Um, no, I, I, loved it. I loved it. I loved yeah. pharma. I still kind of do things um, along the side. So what were you doing? Uh, just go back to the, when you were in that industry. What were you actually doing? What was your role? I have actually managed um, teams in management, but I've, I'm specialized in cardiovascular drugs. And really? Life-saving ones. <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> and do you so if, let's say if you have a heart attack now, well, I was going to say what to do. <laughs> that was going to be my next question. Do you still keep your fingers you know, in it? You know, do you still keep up to date with latest news? You know, you I can, do. You do? I do. I do. It's for my personal interests. Uh, wow. I mean, yeah, I do. So I should have your number on speed dial you if should. anything happens to me. You know, I'm, I'm surprised that all my clients, all the clients that I've worked with for so many years, they actually know and they do call for... Really? You know, kind of questions, uh, confirmation on a drug or diagnosis. They ask me. They still wow. do. Well, actually, I had a situation where I had a, like an MOT test because yeah. I've reached the old ripe old age of 50. <laughs> and my wife said, look, you better go and get, well, you, get you, yourself checked out. You look great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Fabian. Um, you better get yourself checked out. And I thought, all right, oh, you know, I'm sure there's nothing wrong with me. And um, when they were doing the heart test, the lady disappeared. And I was just like, why is she gone? And she looked a bit concerned. 
And then when I sat uh, with the doctor, he said, you've got like an inverted heartbeat, something like that. Okay. So he said, you're, a, you're one of the 4% very rare uh, people that have got this uh, kind of type of heart because it's like your heart is like someone who's had a heart attack. So part of your heart isn't working, yeah. but you've lived with it all your life yeah. and you've never had any issues. So there shouldn't be, there isn't a problem. Because I thought he was going to say, oh, now we need to put you on these drugs. We need to do open surgery and stuff like that. You know, you'd be surprised how the, you know, our, we can, we can, we can respond to abnormalities or things like that. It's, it's really surprising. Each one of us... Uh, you know, answers in a different way to a certain um, disease or no, you're right, absolutely. And then you end up you end up being fine. Yes. Sometimes you wouldn't have discovered it if you haven't done the check. Well, that's what I was thinking. Should I have actually gone and had a test because I would have been none the wiser? If... Well, you know, I've always mentioned unless you need to take a drug, like you really need it, and it's really life threatening, yeah. or there are consequences, just don't. I'm a firm believer of that. I mean, but don't tell my teachers that, that I said that. No, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an industry, so yeah, of course. I mean, it's an industry, true, but unless you have to, just don't, because everything has side effects. It's, oh, it's absolutely. well known. No. So you have to really weigh well, the benefits for this, what side effects you're getting. No, and I saw that growing up. My, my father uh, caught the MRSA bug in hospital, and then for the rest wow. of his life he was on drugs. And you saw the effect of drugs. You know, they were, they were used to suppress the illness or the disease or the illness, but it had all these side effects. They, they do something else. They just eat things. away and, you know, just put on weight, eat away your muscles, your bones, and it was just... I think that's what is missing here. It's, um, you know, prescribing the right one for the right reasons mm. and then taking it for the right reasons in a good compliance I think this is what's missing yes. when I say it still needs improvement. But I think isn't that the whole medical um, side of things is that they don't really um, target a certain illness because they really don't know really how to target something very small. They generally target like a um, area. No, that's harsh. No, is it? Okay. No, it, it progressed. Okay. They, they, they can target. Okay. They can target. It's just the way it's managed. Okay. That's it. All right. Anyway, let's, anyway, let's, 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 let's get on to Surfcore now. <laughs> so, you know, so you found Surfcore. So Surfcore wasn't here when you came over? They were. They were, I think, um, they started in 2008. Okay. I came in 2009. Oh, okay. Yeah. So who was starting them up? Was it someone locally or no, did no, someone no. come all, in? And... All Australians, never, um, because it's an Australian company. So when... I know, I've seen your promo and yeah. it, it, it... So all Australians, which was a big mistake at that time, <laughs> don't tell this to my CEO. <laughs> um, they needed an Arabic speaker, they needed a good seller, a good manager, someone who really... So they didn't the have that when they first came over? They didn't. They, did. they thought that if they brought someone from abroad, it it would, it it should would be work, fine. it yeah, should be fine, yeah, yeah. it didn't. And uh, when I came um, on board, it took me time, to be honest. I was new in Doha, I didn't know anyone. Um, I was a complete stranger to the culture. I've never worked outside of my home country before. Wow. So I had to learn everything from scratch, even the industry. Yeah. Everything from zero. So I've started all over again. So how, did, how long did that take you? Um, uh, well, I, do, I still remember my CEO calling me from Sydney at the time and said, you know, Fabian, you, just, you have six months. Oh, so okay, no pressure. You make it, no okay. pressure. Like, you have to make it in six months. And, and, and you know what, Stefan, I did. I did. It was a challenge. Well, how did you get the job? Because there's someone they coming... They found me. They found you? They found me on, um, on one of the recruitment websites. <laughs> <laughs> So pharmacists it's so funny. It's so funny. come and run our uh, just service found office. Me. Yeah, just found me. Say like, you know, you've worked in sales, you've done management before. Um, why don't you come and work with us and try it out? Okay. Well, we have to say I have a great personality. So. Well, that's it. That's, that's what <laughs> shines through. <laughs> <laughs> I can convince people. No, you can. It, it ended up being really well, but it was tough. It was really tough. And... Did the family suffer for that six months? 
Um, Were you coming home in a bad mood, stressed? You know, I had um, I had two babies. Uh, like I had a seven-year-old girl. Yeah. And two babies, like three and one year and a half. So you're home. balancing that as well. Yeah, I had three kids when I joined Surf Corp. I had already my three girls, and um, I have very good support. Um, my husband is amazing. I he must be have with uh, without him, to be honest. He must be with four girls in the house. <laughs> he must have a lot of patience. <laughs> He is very patient and he <laughs> is very supportive. I couldn't have made it without him, but I'm I'm the kind of person who likes challenges. So when he said six months, it's as like he pushed my button. So like, what do you mean six months? You'll see what I can do in six months. That's what I like. Give and, me, uh, yeah, say that I can't do it or give me a challenge and I'll prove you wrong. Yeah, and, um, and it ended up being well. I mean, Qatar during this period was suffering from, you know, a, a, a global economic situation at that time. 2008, absolutely. Nine, ten. The crash, yeah. Um, and then it started picking up properly. Yeah. And uh, we we kind of... So did you see that? Did you see that with um, the amount of companies that were coming in and... Um, yeah, absolutely. And going? Uh, coming in much more than going. Really? At that time, yes. At that time, uh, coming in um, was really... A very good flow of international companies, even local ones, semi-governmental. I've dealt with all kind of companies. I'm sure you have. I did. But but that's what that's what I see. Surfco. Surfco is like your first port of call, if you're maybe a startup or if you're an international company that want to test the waters and come into a new country. That you guys are the perfect place to, you know, test the waters, um, not invest in a off office space that you know you you provide a facility you've got the infrastructure there already in place you know well you've got the connections yes <laughs> you've got a lot of businesses on the same floor or in the same building that you True. can introduce so it's an ideal you know well when when we first started surf corp like 40 years ago um, it was just an idea like um the CEO wanted just an office and he wanted it in a very good place. Yeah. So he had to rent a full floor. Like the idea of partitions uh, okay. and serviced office didn't exist back then. Yeah. So um, he started drawing on the floor different and separate offices. And once he rented the first one, he started building the second. So that's where and it that's came how from. SurfCorp yeah. was created. When we came to Qatar, the entire idea was to doing exactly the same. Yeah. You want to be in the best place, but you just don't want to make the investment. Mm -hmm. So not only SurfCorp is a solution for small to medium enterprises, entrepreneurs, but also to branch offices, uh, big communities, uh, uh, big companies that um, want to have one to ten people coming on a project basis and leaving. Uh, okay, so it's, that's also they can a, come in. A very good solution. Yeah, that's very true. And what we've done for the past two to three years, it's that we have reshaped the SurfCorp co-working space. Mm -hmm. We said, okay, we have dedicated offices. We are experts in that. We have virtual offices where we provide the infrastructure, the IT support. But also we've refurbished our space to include co-working. Okay, which means? Well, co-working is a very um, nice environment with laid-back um, coffee-like environment. Oh, so you've gone down the Google route. You just, you know, where well, it's just like, hey, man, let's let's have an open space where absolutely you can work with anyone. Yes. Okay. Well, we we took that kind of we wanted to to connect people together, and then if they are locked in their own office, it's going to be hard. So we said, okay, we're that's what I've noticed. That's what I've noticed with, uh, or I have noticed. I've been uh, recently, but you have all these small offices. Yes. And you know, they everyone hides behind these offices. So that's what you've kind of made now is like an open space yeah. where, you know, people can have a break and basically... Well, we took 25% of the space and we kind of transformed it into hot desking, where you come in, you have your own desk, sit wherever you want, benches. But is that is that financially viable for you guys? You know, you're, you're literally giving up 25% of your space for, you know, just for bring people in well, and the idea the idea when we've decided that we that SurfCorp wanted to transform 25% of the yeah. space into co-working yeah. is that we found that there are a lot of small to medium um, businesses entrepreneurs freelancers startups that wanted actually to be introduced and to work with others uh, okay. and the only way we could we could do this is that to invite them to work together 
Okay, in so they can come in to that environment without even having an office. Is yeah, that what you're saying? Exactly. So from okay. a business perspective, there's still um, a market there. Yeah, a market yeah. that is new to this millennium. Yeah. Because people no, want you're right. yeah. like freelancers, own ideas, IT, design, lawyers, cooking classes maybe, coaching, <laughs> you know, all these people cooking coming. Cooking classes? Well, why not? What, you got a kitchen? Well, we don't have a kitchen, <laughs> but... But today we received a call about a, um, a cooking class and said, like, I would like to come. So, like, if you want to hold the class in yeah. the open area, you're most welcome to do it. Wow. So just bring a few stuff of yourself and then come in. Why not? You have changed. We did. We did. And that's exactly why we're having this conversation. So when did that change? Because, uh, you know, 13 years ago or 11 years ago when I met you, that it wasn't the case. It was literally... Okay, these are the different types of offices and here's a boardroom that you can rent out. Well, if, if you look around worldwide, yeah. worldwide and you see how the um, workspace, shared workspace evolved throughout the years, yeah. we couldn't not to change. We had to change. We had to really ride the wave and yeah. say, okay, we have the technology, we have the network, we have um, the knowledge yeah. as a surf code because we, we are an IT company, so we've created our own um, IT solutions yeah. for our clients. So why not actually change and, and make a w the workspace a more interesting one, fun? Okay. But also give them the support yeah. that we are experts in. So does this, do these ideas come from Australia? Is it basically dictated from Australia? And have they tried things in the past that haven't worked, where they thought, hey, it's working in Australia, but then it, you try it out elsewhere well, in the world? Until now, to be honest, nothing that we've no. rolled out in Australia doesn't work worldwide. I mean, we've been here for 10 years, so <laughs> something must be working. <laughs> and when you communicate, do you have to report back to head office? Yeah, I do. And what's the time difference between the two? Seven hours. So they're seven hours in front. Yes. So, so now they're going to go to sleep. In, in so what time do you generally communicate? Eight in the morning. Okay. So are you sometime. a morning person? I'm a, I'm a morning person. Well, yeah. I have kids, they go to school. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to... I'm up, yeah, I'm up very early taking the kids to school, so I can relate to that. So um, going back to the co-working space, oh, sorry, it yes, works so, uh, or it doesn't yes, okay, work, yes. um, that's actually a great thing to say because we're trying it out. We've, we've just refurbished um, one of our locations, the Commercial Bank Plaza, level okay. 14. Is that your oldest, that's your oldest location? That's the first one. Okay, and, and that's two floors? That's two floors. We've okay. done the co-working space on level 14. Okay. And uh, we're, we've, we're finishing Burj Doha. Mm -hmm. So we've refurbished Burj Doha. We've been there for four years now. Okay. And then we're starting the Tornado Tower space in the, in the coming two weeks. And you're getting a good response from... Well, we're getting a response. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but generally a response means it's always negative. No, it's not negative. It's just okay. it is new to the market because we're the first ones to do it in Qatar. We're new. This is something that um, the, the local market is not used to it. So we're trying it out. Uh, we, we've got a good response from the commercial bank plaza experience. Mm -hmm. But we, we're still in the phase of finding out like inviting people in like this is part of our marketing strategy yeah, yeah. it's just steps it takes time um for middle eastern mainly to well, get yeah, used to yeah. the open space yeah. whether if you travel around the world i mean this is really common a yeah. shared co-working open space is what the office space is at the moment worldwide yeah so i yeah, know what goes on worldwide doesn't generally sometimes relate to here but we're kind of costs. we're generally behind yes <laughs> We're always on catch up. Well, we wanted what we wanted to do, you know, SurfCorp Qatar from a worldwide perspective. Yeah. When we are refurbishing our co working space, we're, I think, the third or the fourth country worldwide. Oh, really? Because we see the potential. Okay. And uh, we wanted to be the first company to initiate. I know, but there's always that potential. You see a lot of potential here. Yes. But it's whether the market is ready for that. Yeah. Sometimes you're ahead of the game. And then it takes like three or four years for it to catch up. You know, when we first, uh, when I joined SurfCorp nine years, ten years ago, yeah. um, it, I had the same conversation about <laughs> serviced office space. Yeah. Oh, and really? Said, yeah, because well, who wants to be in a, in a shared office space? 
And then it picked up. It picked up because we've educated the market. We've actually set up a marketing plan where we've told them this is the right solution. Yeah. And do you know how many operators there are now in Doha? Tell us, Fabian. I can't count them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, from an international perspective, they are few. Mm. But from a local perspective, numerous ones. I mean, I, I could say 20, 25 operators minimum. These are Oh, ones you mean that like offering of. service? Yeah, I mean, offering space, yeah. shared space. But yeah. that's good. That's, it's good for you guys as well, because then it basically lets everyone know that there are these facilities and they basically do their research and then see who's the best. Yes. And who they want to go with. Absolutely. This is, this is, this is, these are opportunities. Yeah, yeah. So when, when we started with the co-working space, we kind of lead the market in Qatar as a surf cop entity. Okay. So we're the first ones to enroll the co-working, the shared open space. Yeah. And I'm sure that... Um, you think the others will follow suit? Th they don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because people will go to them and say, well, surf cop got an open working space, so why haven't you? Yeah. So we, we, we kind of start the campaign. Very good. And then everyone follows. So have you got a time frame for this? Have they given you six months for it to work or? No. No, no. it's more. I, I mean, I'm beyond you, that. You, he you, trusts <laughs> me by now. <laughs> well, I hope so. <laughs> After 10 years with the company and, uh, you know, building a career with Surf Corp, um, I'm sure he trusts uh, Yeah, no, I hope so. So um, you're in charge of Iran as well. How did that come about? When did that come about? Oh, my God. Iran came a um, couple of years ago. I think this is my third year taking care of the Iranian market. So um, are you flying over there? And every month for a week. Every month I really? go there for one week, yes. So what, what's it like? I've never been there. You know, I only get fed, you know, what uh, media feeds us about Iran. What, what's it like? It's and is, it's and yeah. is, is, are your offices in Tehran? Yes. Is that just... Just the main city? It's Our capital. offices are in Tehran, in the business area, um, iconic buildings, like all surf corp locations worldwide. They have to be in an iconic oh. building. The address is very important. Of course. Where you operate is important. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, the environment, it's not what the media actually says. <laughs> well, no, I've got a couple of friends that do come from Iran, so, you know, they paint a different picture. And it's different. Yeah. It is actually different. It's been a very challenging market. Or when the sanctions were lifted and then suddenly reinstated. Yeah. So it has been a challenging market. But um, there are, I think, 70 million people there. So wow. you can imagine the potential. Yeah. And uh, we are the only international operator, 100% owned internationally. Oh, really? There, yes. And was that easy to set up? Um, or was there a lot it was of very easy to set up. The really? Setting up a company in, in, in Iran is very easy. Making it work, <laughs> that's a different challenge. <laughs> no, absolutely. So how do you advertise the fact that you're there and, you know, you want international business and local business to, you know, have yeah. an office with you guys? How, is that easy? Um, it's challenging. We I have uh, constraints and restrictions that uh, we can't really overcome. So we advertise locally, a lot right. locally, okay. a lot locally, because... The SurfCorp entity was established there for locals, for Iranians. Ah, uh, okay, right. It, was, it wasn't, the objective wasn't like for international. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. It's because the market needed such a solution, and, and that's why we're there. And is it working? It is working. We so how many office have, spaces have you got? I have uh, four different floors, two different locations. Wow. Yes, um, more than 150 offices. So the demand was there because you wouldn't open. We wouldn't so you would there. start one and then see if that works and then you would open the second one. I'm opening the second location in a couple of weeks. It's done. It's ready. Okay. And what's it like being a woman to, you know, go over there and do business? You would be surprised. Um, all my team in Tehran except one are women. But isn't that the surf core thing? That you have to not be a, a very unattractive not woman? No, not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> That's the impression no, I get. It, it's, it's true. <laughs> like things, um, w like messages with women come across easily. Yes. In sales specifically. Yes. But no, in, in, in other countries we have men. That doesn't have to be women. But <laughs> to answer your question about a woman working in yes. Iran, if you thought that it would be difficult, they're all women. Very so they're very accepting right, and that, accepted in, yeah. in the community, in the business community. They have their own challenges, mm -hmm. but they can overcome. It's not like the media is, is actually picturing things. 
And are they multilingual as well? Yes, they are. Is that a, a stipulation from Surfcore that you have to speak uh, several languages? Well, yes. We, we kind of, well, that's, that's kind of, <laughs> of something course, that you can course. say that um, we are at least bilingual. Yeah, very good. Um, okay, moving forward. So, Surfcore, are they in every major city around the world? Well, we're in 53 cities around the world, and uh, we have one, more than 160 locations worldwide. Okay, is there any location that's never worked that you know of? That they said, oh, hey, let's try there, and then it hasn't really... We've never got into a city, and it didn't work. No? We normally go in... We, we, we barely... We normally don't close locations. Yeah. Barely, so so you have. Well, we, I'm sure with 40 years of business, we must have closed yeah, one true. or two because we had normal business issues or yeah. challenges. Yeah. But um, talking about 160 locations worldwide, when we go into a country, we're sure that there is a potential. Yeah. And do the guys from Australia come and visit often? They do. They do. Um, every now and then. Yeah. Once a year, maybe twice a year. Twice, but twice then, every two but years. But Surfcore is not like uh, IKEA where they like to show that their their Swedishness. Do Surfcore not like to show their Australianness? Is there apart from that bad promo that they oh. did with the koala? <laughs> it's not a koala. <laughs> it's a wombat. <laughs> All right, a wombat then. <laughs> it still goes there. Is it still? Is it's it still, still on? It's still there. We've changed it. We've changed uh, the um, animated character. It's still a wombat. It's still a wombat. But he's not fat anymore. He's oh, so so ah, so he's moved with the times. Yes, yes. He's so thin, he's he's a fit, modern he's cool. a modern business uh, wombat. Modern wombat. Superb. Is he still walking around with his waistcoat and uh, you know tweed jacket? No, he's modernized now. <laughs> <laughs> Very laid back shirt and the really? sneakers. Yeah, yeah. Has he got an Australian can, accent? Well, you know, you can see him in the profile. Ah, wow. Are you sure that isn't the same one? Is it? That's his brother or cousin? Because well, he looks, yeah, he looks well, much younger. Looking at forty years, his son. That's true. Probably. Has he got a name? Sydney. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> How convenient. Silly question, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Sydney. But Sydney. why is he leaning against a red phone box, which is uh, well, see, a bit because, out of date? Because this is this is kind of the new co-working space. We've installed phone booth in our open space so that people can come in and have a private conversation. What, two people standing in the phone booth? No, no, no. Oh. So he's just introducing because that's a phone booth where... We actually have the exact phone booth in location. You do? Yeah, we do. We do. In Are our they location. the original ones from the London or they were just made? They were made for oh, us. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's funny. We've got a phone booth on our front door. Yeah. Yeah. Not like this one. No, not like that one. Oh. Not properly made. Well, you can come and use ours. <laughs> I will. I want a picture in that phone booth. So, um, all right. We're running out of time. So, moving forward. Yes. How do you see Surfcore uh, in the next? Look, we're, we're leading up to the World Cup. So is that good news for you guys? Um, are you going to expand well, even more? Or? We're hoping that it's going to be good news for everyone. Yeah. That's what we're, uh, we're hoping for. Yeah. I mean, it's been um, quite a um, challenging two years. Like last year was extremely challenging. Oh, and, and I felt, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of businesses felt it. A lot of businesses felt it. But do you feel it. now, you know, I feel it, that there is a change and there is a momentum starting to happen? Well, or you, it's you're a not start, feeling it. It's a start, but uh, it still it still <laughs> didn't pick up like we we were hoping no. for. Uh, we can still feel companies and see companies leaving, shutting down. Yeah. And few coming, but we. But not as many as. Uh, not as many as we were hoping no. for. But we we believe that within the coming three to six months, this is going to change. Yeah. With the with the World Cup coming in and. Um, things have to change. There is no. No, other they have option. to absolutely. And and the reason why Surfcorp refurbish the co-working space is because for these companies who are there only for a one year, few months, six months on a project basis, the co-working space would be a perfect choice for them. Mm. That's what we are hoping for. And then we shouldn't forget the uh, government initiatives from pushing startups and small Oh, that's huge. Yeah, they're really pushing that now. They're really, yeah. And we're supporting this. Yeah. Uh, Do you think that's... Uh, recently changed because I always felt many years ago it was kind of hot air um, not really much substance behind it but I, real, I feel now there's a lot of substance you know where they are really engaging and really pushing startups and entrepreneurs more and more 
They are, they are. You, you can only have a sustainable long-term economy if you Absolutely, really yeah. push your small to medium enterprises, your entrepreneurs, your startups. Yeah. And this is exactly what is happening. Yeah. It's just, it takes time. These things take time. Absolutely. But I am sure it's on the right way. And um, SurfCorp is there to support because we want them to save on costs. And that's exactly what we do. We save on their costs and then... And have your prices kind of changed, uh, you know, prices. because of the market? We, because rentals have come down. Has that kind of, uh, kind of uh, reflected in your costs? Yes, it did. Uh, I mean, SurfCorp, the way you know it 10 years ago, <laughs> was well-priced 10 years ago. Yes, I mean, 10 years ago. The absolutely, market, absolutely. It's according yeah. to, and, and we changed you changed. the market. Okay. And that's exactly what SurfCorp is. We have um, great affordable prices, whether it's a serviced office, a virtual office, or a co-working space, hot mm. desk, or dedicated desk. We, 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 we ride the wave with the market. So nice. if the okay. prices go up, we go, go up. up. If the prices go down, we go down. Very good. Superb. Well, right. thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. This is fun. See, it wasn't as hard as you <laughs> thought it would be. It's fun. Yes. It was fun. So thank I appreciate you. you coming on. And, uh, you know, please feel, no, please feel free to come on the show in future. If there's any changes or any updates, we'd love to hear what, how Surfcore's doing. I will. And if uh, the big bosses from Australia want to come in and have a chat, happy to interview them. Oh, my God. Um, that would be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> that would be interesting <laughs> to have him as a host. We'll oh, see. Fabian's got that laugh that, you know, I mentioned something before the show and she started to laugh. I'm like, Fabian, what well, are you doing? He's what, what? 76 years old. That's fine. Very fit. Wonderful man. Superb. I think he would be a great yeah, added value. Brilliant. Absolutely. If he accepts. Oh, why not? Well, Look, I can convince after, him. After maybe. he's seen you on the show, he should be coming on. Well, you will know. Come on. If you don't Send. see me again, Okay, you then you know you put out the wrong message and... Uh, no. You'll know what okay. happened. Okay, all right. Okay, great. Superb. Thank you, Fabian. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, so, if you want to find us on um, iTunes and Stitcher, you can go to your iPhone, iPhone iPhone and say, Hey, Siri, subscribe to your onion. And if you're an Android user, you can find various apps like Pop... It, Pocket Cast, Podcast Addict, Stitcher, Play FM, and Google Play. Um, and just a reminder that uh, on the 30th of September, it's International Podcast Day. So if anyone's lit watching this video and you're not into podcasts yet, basically whatever you're interested in, there's a podcast for you. So start listening to podcasts. It's the best way to be stuck in a traffic jam and, you know, sp spend the time away. Do you listen to podcasts? I do. Have you got any favorite? Apart from your onion and dough I eat. Yeah, I don't think so. I think they're my favorite because, you know, I know you, so yeah, I yeah. put a face to the oh, voice. Bless you. Yeah, that's kind of nice. All right, thank okay. you. Anyway, have a great week. Thank you. Thank you.